So wait to omnes, welcome to this video lesson on section seven of Fabulae Facules, a human sacrifice. We're picking up in the story of Perseus. Tum Rex Diem Kertam Dixit, then the king said a certain day, et omnia parawit, and he prepared everything, all the things. Dixit and parawit, notice the X and the V marking those as perfect tense stems. So those are perfect actives. Ubi ea dies wainit, when that day came, and wainit, we know it's perfect tense because of the long e, when it with the short e is comes, present tense. So when that day came, Andromeda ad litus deducta est, Andromeda, this is the beautiful Ethiopian princess here, was uh, led down, deducta est, two word perfect passive. Of course, this is from the base verb duco, ducere, to lead or to guide or bring, and then the day prefix indicating down. She was brought down ad litus to the shore. Litus, like tempus and corpus, is a third neuter, so the us ending, it's accusative, same as the nominative. Et inconspectu omnium, and in the sight of everyone, or of all the people, ad rupim allegata est. She was bound or tied to a rock or to a crag. Rupes is kind of a little uh, cliff or craggy rock at the edge of the shore here. Um, ligo ligare, the base verb for tying, we get ligament and ligation, some other words uh, in English for that root or from that root. And the odd prefix has been added to that here and it's been assimilated. So odd ligata became aligata. So she was tied to the, the cliff, to the, the rocky crag. Omnes fatum eus deplorabant. They all uh, deplored or wept uh, about, bemoaned, we might say, her fate, fatum eus. Nec lacrimas tenebant, nor did they hold back their tears. So, so far, all these verbs, parawet, wain it, deducta est, allegata est, those are all perfects, and then deplorabant, deplorabant and uh, tenebant are imperfects, all past tense verbs. But the next sentence we get a vivid historical or narrative present. And this just makes it look like it's something suddenly happening right before our eyes. At subito, but suddenly, dum monstrum expectant, while they are waiting on the monster. Perseus accurate, Perseus speeds up, right? I wouldn't say runs up here, even though usually Kuro does have to do with running, but I think he's probably flying with his winged sandals. So, he speeds up. Et ubi lacrimas vidit, and when he saw their tears, calsam dolores quiet. He seeks, or perhaps asks for, searches for the cause of their sadness, dolores. Ili, they, rem totam exponent, expound, or perhaps explain the whole thing. Remember, this is from ex and pono. Pono is to put or place. So literally, sort of like he sets out or places out the whole thing, the whole matter, or they place out the whole matter, rather. And so, again, explain is a good way to translate that idiomatically in English. So they explain the whole matter. Et puellam demonstrant, and they show or point out the girl. And this, of course, is Andromeda, the beautiful princess, tied up on the beach. And I might note here Andromeda, um, so the Ethiopians, or Aetiopes in Greek and Latin, uh, were viewed with great respect in the ancient world, um, even in the earliest sources. So there's a famous hero named Memnon who is uh, in the Trojan cycle. Um, he defeats many Greek heroes before he's finally killed by Achilles, who of course ends up killing pretty much everybody in the Trojan cycle. But Memnon is a great Ethiopian hero. He is the son of uh, Aurora or uh, Aos is her Greek name, the goddess of the dawn. And let's see, um, Herodotus talks about them being very tall, very strong. Uh, their bows are so powerful that no other human beings can draw them. Um, very wise people and so on. So they were well respected. And uh, 
viewed as having very dark black skin, too. Now, Andromeda, strangely enough, in the Greek vase paintings, often is shown, um, you know, with very white-looking skin. Now, so this could be whitewashing people, forgetting the fact that she's supposed to be Ethiopian uh, or ignoring that willfully. Or it could be just explained as, as a matter of style. It's often been pointed out in Greek uh, vase paintings and a lot of other art of the Mediterranean that the men are typically depicted in the darker colors, which might be red or black sort of colors, and that the women um, are depicted in the light colors, like a whitish hue. And it doesn't matter what ethnicity um, the people are. So it may be that this depiction of Andromeda looking whitish to us is not actually trying to depict her as not Ethiopian. But in any case, she is Ethiopian here in all versions of this myth. All right, and going on, et ubi lacrimas widit, and when he saw their tears, and this is Perseus, of course, Calcum Dolores Quiret, he seeks the cause of their pain. Um, they expound the whole affair and they show the girl. Dum haik gerunter, while these things are being done. Frimitus terribilis, a terrible roar. And frimitus, this verbal noun refers to a kind of deep throaty noise such as a bear or a lion or a really big monster might make. So roar or growl or something like that. A terrible roar. Auditor is heard. Simur, at the same time, monstrum horribili specie, a monster of horrible appearance, or perhaps with a horrible appearance. Horribili specie is ablative of description here. Procul conspicitor is sighted or is seen at a distance or from afar. Procul. Aeus conspectus, its sight, and the its, the Aeus here, refers to the sea monster, right? Its appearance, its sight. Timorem maximum omnibus in yekit, uh, cast a very great fear, or the greatest fear, timorem maximum, on everyone. And let me note that in yekit is a compound uh, with the in prefix, of the base verb in yaki, I'm sorry, yakio, yakere, yaki, yaktus, which means to throw or to cast. Um, and I will note here, this is a compound verb. A lot of compound verbs work this way, where you have a direct object in the accusative, here, tamorum maximum, and then you'll have an object that works with the prefix, here the prefix is in, and that object will be in the dative case, so that's omnibus here, dative plural. So he cast the greatest fear, direct object, to more in maximum, accusative case, on everyone, omnibus, dative case. A lot of compound verbs will work that way with double objects, one in the accusative for the base direct object, and then one that works with the prefix in the dative case. All right, monstrum magna celeritate ad litus contendit. The monster, monstrum, uh, hurries contendit, with great speed, magna caleritati, that's an ablative of manner. Sometimes those will have a cum in there, so you could have said magna cum caleritati, but they don't have to, especially if you have an adjective with the ablative noun as here. So he hurries, the monster hurries with great speed, magna caleritati, to the shore, ad litus, yamque, and now, ad locum apropinquabat, he approached, or was approaching, perhaps is even better, the place, Ubi Puella Stabat, where the girl was standing. Just a quick reminder, Puella, just like Puer, can refer to somebody in their teens or even in their early 20s, um, you know, or beyond, but definitely that here. So this doesn't necessarily mean that she's actually really a little girl, right? Uh, I think she's generally viewed, and again, this is a myth, it's not real, <laughs> but in most of the versions, I think she's imagined to be kind of a teenager or a young woman, right? Okay, good. Hope you learned a few things here about the myth, about um, maybe.